Hi there guys and welcome back to the channel Machining with Joe, a channel where I share with you my journey as a beginner machinist. So what a crazy week this has been. I've been so busy in the workshop, it's been unreal. So as you can probably see up there, I've got a new milling machine. That's not what this video is about, but it's partially the reason I've been so busy. But in today's video, I want to jump back in with the power feed on the lathe. I've pretty much done everything now to get it working, as you can probably tell from last week's thumbnail. But I'm basically going to cover with you everything that I've done so far, going through more on the electrics and the fabrication side of it, the bracket I've had to make up to mount the motor. And then after that, we'll give it a few test runs and see just how good it is. And for anyone new to machining that's just watching this channel, please subscribe because on this channel, this is what we mainly focus on machining for a beginner so if you are new to machining this channel will hopefully help you out but for now let's see what i've done from last week and see how this is all going to work right then let's start with the electrics so straight away hopefully you can tell that i've took the effort to enclose all the electrics in one of these nice boxes and inside there we've got everything you saw in last week's video other than I've also added a switch, which I'll quickly cover in a minute, exactly what that does. But again, like I said last week, we've basically got our power supply unit, our stepper motor control unit, our pulse width modulator, and now we've got this switch. So how this works is, cause, just because it's a little bit awkward now to get to the pulse width modulation on and off, I've added an on off switch, which when turned, turns off the stepper motor. So in theory now, the pulse width modulator is always left on and we just turn the stepper motor on and off when we want to use it. So these are the main controls we're gonna be using. Like I just said, we've got an on off switch here for the stepper motor controller and we've got the variable speed knob here, which we can quite easily adjust. If for any reason we have to change the direction or turn this off, you can get in there with a flat headed screwdriver, but it's just a little bit awkward and it's not something we're going to be doing every day. So that is that. Now, that was quite easy to knock up, but this bit took a little bit more time. So we needed a way of mounting the motor to the bench and also to be able to adjust the belt tension. So I came up with this design. I basically got a cutout for where the pulley goes and fixtures that when tightened will stop the motor moving. And on the back here, We've just got this M8 nut, which when wound out, pushes the motor that way, which applies tension to the belt. This is a really basic idea of tensioning a belt, but for what we're doing, it's gonna work perfect because it's gonna be so simple that if anything was to go wrong, it's really easy just to strip this apart and fix it. So that's really all I've done since last week. I suppose now all that's left to do is mount this all on the bench and then I'll go through a little bit more detail tensioning the belt and then after that I think we can run the lathe up and test out the power feed. Right then this is the setup like it looks when the motor is mounted on the bench. Here we have the pulley on the end of the lead screw and down here we have our stepper motor and this is our mounting bracket with the built-in adjuster. So basically how this setup works is these nuts on here I've just wound on hand tight. They're still loose, so they're not actually tight yet. And basically to adjust the belt, all you do is you wind this M8 bolt out. So by winding that out, it's pushing the motor away from the end of the lead screw here. So applying tension to the belt. So all we do is we keep winding this out until it's at a good point where it's nice and tight. Don't want it too tight because otherwise it will wear the belt out a lot quicker. But about so you can turn the belt about half a turn. So I'd say a tiny bit more than that and then we're done. Yeah. Sounds like a guitar. So that's all done now. All you've got to do once you've done that up is do this lock nut up here 
and then do these little bolts up or these little nuts should I say here so I'm going to do that and then when we come back this will all be set up ready to do some power feeding right we're all set up then ready to start power feeding so now it is simple as turn this switch on and the motor engages and if we want to go faster we can adjust the speed on this dial here but for power feeding I'm going to start off as slow as this will go and we'll see what sort of finish we get so I'm going to start this easy and start with a 0.3 millimeter depth of cut on power feed here we go so this is just normal mild aluminium and we're running the lathe at just under 700 rpm so that power feed seems to be working really well it's giving a really constant feed all the way down the work and i think we'll just stop it there and we'll check out what the finish is like on this aluminium so first impressions of that it's given a really nice finish on there unfortunately i don't think we were going deep enough of our depth of cut to get the chips to break but nonetheless that finish is really good for a power feed let's bump it up to 0.5 millimeter depth of cut now and we'll see if we can start to get some chips breaking Still not quite deep enough to get any chips breaking. I think I'm going to stop it there and we'll go for a one millimeter depth of cut and see if we can get some chips breaking. Doesn't seem to want to be breaking chips now. So ignoring the fact I couldn't get these chips to break, let's look at just the finish that this power feed gave. Looking at the three different depths of cut we've done, the finish is constant throughout and it's in fact a really nice finish. So I'm going to say that this power feed has been a complete success. It's given me the ability to do long cuts on work pieces and maintain a really constant finish. And I've got to admit on the lowest speed there, it's not ridged at all. So I would say that that lowest speed is a really good speed for the lathe to work at. Right then, that's the power feed upgrade all completed. And I'm really happy with how that turned out. It's given a really good finish. And the main thing, it's a really constant finish. So that's great. Sorry you didn't get to see much of the fabrication work involved in making that bracket. Just this week has been so busy. I just wanted to get stuck in and get this project finished. So I hope that I've included as much detail as I can to hopefully help you guys out. Right then, moving away from the lathe and opening up a new chapter on the channel, we've got the mill. So I've spent a lot of this week moving it here, cleaning it, getting it all ready for use. And in next week's video, I'm going to do a basic rundown on the mill, all the parts that my mill has that may be a little bit different to other mills out there and if we have time I might start making some chips on the mill and see what finish this can give. Other than that guys, thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing and a big congratulations to the five people who spotted the Machining with Joe logo sticker in the last couple of videos. You should all have your stickers now so well done on that. For now then, that is all in today's video. If you haven't already, Go back and watch part one of this video and I'll see you in the next one guys.